Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you want know to do to this channel, subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspired by dreams. Shop. Okay, today's episode, this is a very special episode I wanted to bring to my peoples, and it's just we're breaking down the difference between scammers and hackers. Scammers are more likely people that scam you maybe on phone calls, try to get a few dollars out of your bank account, try to get you to send them some kind of money. They use the information that you supply to them. Now on the other hand of hackers, hackers are more type of person, they, are, they hunt people and for different reasons, either to get information, hold things over your head, and they allow you to pay when they make an offer. In other words, they already have your information. They can get your information, but they just use your information to get more out of you. So that's kind of like just a little quick gist of the differences between hackers and scammers. But let's take a look at different hackers, different scammers, and see if you guys know the difference between both and just see the difference between both of them are dangerous, but they're not the same. Let's get it. $10 million to find this man. What did they do? He's an accused hacker who's cost state agencies and nonprofits hundreds of millions of dollars. Marvin Scott heard from agents in New Jersey today. But Vives is a dangerous and prolific cyber criminal. Washington is offering a hefty reward to anyone who can turn him in. Currently living in Russia, Matviev is charged in a federal indictment with hacking 2,800 victims and making ransom demands of at least $400 million over the past three years. According to the indictment unsealed in New Jersey, Matviev and his co-conspirators used three different ransomware variants to attack unsuspecting victims, including hospitals, schools, nonprofits, and law enforcement agencies. Matviev and his co-conspirators took advantage of the vulnerabilities in their victims' computer systems. They would either encrypt or steal the data on the computer systems, or both. They sent threatening communications with ransom demands. These demands were for hundreds of thousands of dollars. If a victim did not pay up, they would publish the private data the indictment states the victims paid $200 million in ransom to safeguard their data. The cyber criminals are accused of hacking a nonprofit health organization in Mercer County, New Jersey, a police department in Passaic County, and the Metropolitan Police in Washington, D.C. We allege Matt Beeve leaked documents more containing information about open investigations, joint operations with federal agencies, and sensitive human resources details. That type of information getting out to the general public could have put officers and even the public in danger. Matviev is hiding behind multiple aliases in Russia. Authorities hope that charges against him will send a message to cyber criminals around the world. The FBI and our law enforcement partners, including our international partners, are coming after you. We will eventually, eventually bring you to justice. For the moment, Mikhail Matviev is safe in Russia, which has no extradition treaty with the United States. But to encourage people to find him and bring him to justice, the State Department is offering an unprecedented $10 million reward. That's to anyone who can lead to the arrest and conviction of the alleged cyber criminal who faces up to 20 years in prison if he's convicted on the charges. I'm Martin Scott. A scammer stole a Houston artist's life savings, and the FBI says it's an example of a growing scam across the U.S. Hey there, I'm Brandy, digital anchor at KJU11 in Houston, and here's what we know. Richard Hall has been a studio artist for the past six or seven years, but he's made art his entire life. These days, his work is on display at Studio 227 at Sawyer Yards. A man posing as an officer from the Federal Trade Commission called Hall and claimed he was investigating hackers targeting Hall's bank accounts. He groomed me for several weeks and had me moving some monies around 
and buy from one account to the other. You won't see a lot of hackers Usually, going after the elderly uh, like that. It's mostly scammers uh, going after the elderly. Cashier's the checks. Elderly. During one of those wire transfers, the bank caught on and stopped the transfer. But Hall had already lost $238,000 money. He's not sure he will ever get back. He called the Houston Police Department and the FBI, both of whom say this is a scam that is on the rise. Just last year, in 2022, there were more than 80,000 people older than 60 who filed complaints. They lost a total of $3.1 billion. Hall says he just wants other people to be aware that this is going on. That's the hardest part. And then knowing that I was so, so naive and got suckered. But, you know, I can say this, this is, this has been a wonderful community. All my colleagues, every one of them in this building and the other five buildings on this campus. Hall's a popular artist at Sawyer Yards and his colleagues there set up a GoFundMe to help him out. You can find that and more information about the scam in the article here. I don't even know if I am allowed to make this video right now, but I'm gonna make it because I'm... <sighs> okay. I work in banking. I work in banking. I just sat down with a customer for about a little bit over four hours of my day. I work an eight hour shift. I just sat down with a customer for about four hours. Real quick, see, these scammers that she's going to be talking about, they scam somebody into giving their information to taking money out of the bank, whereas a hacker will just take the money out the bank. It's a difference. So half of my day's work, it is 3.30 p.m. and I am now about to go for lunch, okay? Because I've had this woman since 11 o'clock this morning. Like hackers don't need your information. They can get your information. There is an epidemic of scammers going on right now where customers are getting calls on the phone or text messages where they say, oh, somebody attempted to make a withdrawal or a transaction on your account. If this was not you, please call this number. And the customers are calling these numbers. Great. And then the people behind the call say, let me get some information of you to verify so that I can help you secure your money at this bank, at this credit union, at this financial institution. And the people willingly give out their information. They willingly give out their account numbers, their online banking IDs, their passwords, their debit card pins, their debit card numbers, their credit card numbers, thinking that they're doing the right thing trying to secure their accounts and they are actually giving all of their credentials to these scammers who are then going to log into your online banking and wire money out of your account galore and they're doing this telling you i'm transferring the funds into a secure online account until we can secure that you know that the scammers didn't take the money out we're going to keep it here for 24 hours and then tomorrow we'll transfer it back or they tell customers, go into the institution where you bank, make a withdrawal, do not tell them what you're making the withdrawal, and then take the money to this Bitcoin machine so it could be secured for a certain amount of days until the scammers are out of your account and then we will redeposit it. And people are doing it. People are doing these things. They're following these instructions. And I know that a lot of people are older and they don't understand, they don't know. But it doesn't make sense. Please, please, I hope this reaches a lot of people. Do not fall for these scams. Send this to your grandmother, send this to your grandfather, to your great aunt. They are targeting senior citizens. It's a big thing right now, it's a big thing. And they're convincing them that they're actually helping them, that they're trying to secure their money. They're even telling them that their own banks are scamming them out of their money to take it out and put it in a Bitcoin machine or to buy gift cards with the money. It's a scam. Please, if you get a call like this, if you get a text message like this saying, please call this number, give us information, hang up the phone and go to your local branch and inquire with a banker or a teller or a bank manager so we can advise you so you don't lose your money because people are losing their life savings thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars they are losing because people are falling for these scams i want people to please please just if you get a question like this just go to your branch go to your branch call your branch directly 
don't don't give out any information no company no financial institution will ask you to provide credentials to confirm that you are you they will not do it if they're asking for debit card pins for social security number for account numbers it's a scam banks credit unions they do not ask for that please send this to an elderly family member because they're the main ones who are being attacked and they're the main ones who are falling for this i don't want you guys to lose your money i don't care where they bank please please thank you and this is without running like i said this is without running a scan so you know like i'll keep it i'll keep the computer ready for when you want to see a face but i'll show you how wild that can get let's do that oh you want to see it yeah let's do it <clears throat> so describe what you're going to do so i'm going to do you want i could do my face your face anyone's face that you want to do does it you, you just tell me who's yeah face we can do my face okay it's going to be there's a big difference in sophistication levels between a hacker and a scammer a hacker is more sophisticated as well as more precise on what they need to get done and how they're going to do it. Whereas a scammer is more taking information as you present it. We have a lot of pictures of you, obviously because of your podcast, but. So basically what you're doing is you're taking a photo of me. It's going to do the facial recognition and find every image on the internet that has my face in it. Yeah. Whether I'm tagged in it or not. Yeah. Like it's strict. You could find my face in the middle of uh, the Super Bowl stadium. As long as it's on the internet. So yeah, let me take a picture and send it to myself. Um, okay. So I took a picture of your face and you can see, it's just a picture that this has never been on the internet, right? That is a really good looking man right there. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So I uploaded that to uh, to here. So you took a picture. Yep. And now, now you can go through these and see if there's anything. It's not, not, I don't know if there's gonna be anything that you don't want on there or not. But if you click them, it will give you a link to where, uh, where that picture's hosted at. But remember, I used a picture that was never on the internet to find those photos of you. So it measured your face. It measured 120 points on your face associated a picture that's never touched the internet with you and uh for somebody that doesn't have as big of a following or as many photos out there there may be less results but you could be in a photo that you're not aware of or uh or there could be some stuff out there that you would want to be aware of oh wow this is really this is like everything yeah it just keeps going Social Security Administration is not going to help you. This is Wells Fargo calling with your direct deposit of four hundred ninety-nine dollars. Yes, this is this is Mark Wilson from the Social Security Administration. Talk with customer press one. To confirm this payment, please press one. Two little dark two and two twenty-two. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. To return to the main menu, please press star. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I'm fine, I can't understand. Talk with customer, press 2. If you're a dirty scammer, please press 11 <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand. <laughs> to return to the main menu, please press star. <laughs> No. You have no unread text messages. Hey Siri, text message. Yeah, You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. Sorry. Unlock your iPhone. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Siri, hey Siri, open text message. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. How do I unlock it? I need another key. Do you know how to unlock your phone whenever you want to use it? You well, unlock it. Well, sometimes I'd have a passcode and I don't really remember the key from. Do you know the code to unlock the iPhone? No, miss. You do have that code for the passcode in order to unlock your phone. Hold on. Hey, Siri, open text. You'll need to unlock your iPhone first. 
Um, do you know my code, lady? Miss, uh, like, how can I know the passcode of your iPhone? Here I have one of my favorite hacking tools. Hack. This is actually the HackRF, but it's a portable version. And one of the really cool features it has is this uh, capture setting where you can capture wireless signals and then basically just replay them later. So what I have here is the remote for my wireless blind. So I'm just gonna press a button and we're gonna actually see it show up on the graph. So as you can see, the blinds are up. I'm gonna take my hack RF. I'm just gonna press the button and down they come. Now this also actually works for a lot of garage gates and garage doors. Hackers have claimed to have stolen the social security numbers of virtually every single American. So according to a class action lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the hacking group USDOD claimed in April to have stolen personal records for 2.9 billion people from the national public data, which offers public information to employers, private investigators, staffing agencies, and others doing background checks. The group offered in a forum for hackers to sell the data for $3.5 million. Okay, These are records from the United States. Canada and the United Kingdom. The information consists of 2.7 billion records, each of which includes a person's full name, address, date of birth, social security number, and phone number, along with alternate names and birth dates. These hackers have claimed this. So National Public Data did respond to these people's requests for comment, but they did send an email saying, we are aware of certain third-party claims about consumer data and are investigating these issues. They also said that they are going to purge all non-public personal information, and we may be required to retain certain records to comply with legal obligations all right so if you suspect that your social security number has been you know hacked you need to freeze your reports as soon as possible i know you're thinking well i got bad credit anyway they can use it to open up bank accounts in your name they can use it to access your medical records they can use it to access your car records they can use your social security social security number for a stuff that is not just credit so please make sure y'all monitor y'all's credit reports and stuff associated with your social security number watch this insurance scammer try to pull a fast Damn. one Oh, shit. What the fuck? She immediately starts screaming at the other driver, saying that it's his fault. But lucky for him, he's got a dash cam. Life, man. This is big scamming, man. This is bad. It's not something you want to do to get money because, like they say, all money ain't good money, man. You ain't hey, go check all of your files. They're all gone, first off. Secondly, um, all the potential victims, they've all been called. So all of the all those potential people you have to call back. I saw the text files of people you got to call back. They're not going to talk to you. I just want to let you know. Oh, you are in our IP or what? I'm not going to tell you, you anything. I'm watching you though. You're very handsome. I, I just don't know why your shirt is off because there's people in the room with you. I don't know why your shirt is off. It's it's very odd to me. So you need to put I your don't shirt know. on. Okay. And secondly, by the way, I know you're probably working out of an apartment complex, but seriously, man, you gotta you gotta stop what you're doing because you're gonna be exposed really really soon. Okay. As your Skype runs down from twenty one dollars to zero, we'll just keep intercepting all your phone calls. Okay. Are you cool with that? What are you talking about, sir? On what I'm talking about. Who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. You? you just got destroyed. So boom, sucker. Yeah, no, no. Clay County Sheriff's Office, as in this is a law enforcement yeah. agency you just yeah. called. Oh, law enforcement agency. Oh, my God. What I'm going to do now? Yeah, Definitely. what are you going to do now? Yeah, take your scam. Sir, All right. I'm going to give you my IP address. Yeah. You ain't got to give me I'm your IP address. You. you don't have to give me your IP address. Stop trying to scam people. So what? Stop trying to scam people. Understood? And I'm sure that you and you are wondering what will be the catch, right? Yeah, I am wondering. All right. I have fully understood what my associate told you over the phone or no? Yes, I did. It's so exciting. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Daria, I'm giving you a short recap. A saving is five days and four nights of all stay, plus a $50 dining card, okay? Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And by the way, uh, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and the latest time is 8 o'clock in the evening tomorrow. Let's do the 8 o'clock because I work at the zoo here and it doesn't close till about mm -hmm. 7. Okay, okay, sure. I'll put it in because uh, actually due to the value of the gift, we can't afford any cancellation. So do you think uh, there will be no problem tomorrow at 8 o'clock? Do you have any priorities? Or this is the most convenient day and time that will work for you? I should be done feeding the monkeys by then. <laughs> so that should be good. Um, okay. That we can send it to you is through email. 
Uh, can I have her email? Yes. Okay, so I'll uh, one by one phonetically. Yes. Okay. So my email is boots with the fur looking at her at gmail.com. Are you playing with us? No. Okay. The card has your name on it? Yes. All right. And go ahead with the number, please. It's three, two, one. Good evening. We are live on television right now with an investigation into scam callers. We have the FBI on the line. They are tracking this phone number as we speak. Sir, what is your full name again? Well, hopefully that gives you guys some kind of clarification on the differences between a scammer and a hacker. But if not, I want you guys to check out this story. I'll just give you a little briefing on it. Okay, this is a very highlighted story in the hackers community. I'm not in the hackers community. I just I'm intrigued by smarter people. But anyway, there's a there's a story about two casinos in Vegas, the MGM and Caesars. Both of those casinos were hacked. The hackers gave them a phone call telling them, you know, they had to pay a certain amount of money to both of those casinos. Now, one of those casinos, I'm not going to say any names, but one of those casinos said, you know what? I'm not, I don't want to pay the money. I'm not with this. This is, this got to be like a hack. And they thought that the hackers were just playing around. Like I always tell you, don't mess with those hackers. The other casino, on the other hand, they said, you know what? We don't want to deal with this. Let's just pay him the money. And they paid the money. Now, in that situation, only one casino got hacked. And that same casino that got hacked, they ended up spending more than the offer that the hackers had offered them. I think it was something like $3 million. They ended up spending more just to fix this whole situation after the hack was displayed. While the other casinos saved themselves a lot of money by just paying the hackers. So that's what I'm telling you. The difference between hackers and scammers are different. In the sophistication hackers hunt for what they want they lay out their price and that's that or they start the hacking scammers the more information you provide that's the more information they build on you so they can get into whatever they have to get into big difference you guys let me know down below if that was a if that was clarified good, good enough for you guys and if not i can always make another video but until next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel subscribe